video from Shomuz Biology. And in this uh, video, we are going to talk about safe triaxone antibiotic. So safe triaxone belongs to beta lactam kind of antibiotic. It belongs to uh, cephalosporin group of antibiotics. Uh, so what is safe triaxone? Uh, what are the classes of safe triaxone? What is the classification of safe triaxone antibiotic? Safe triaxone general use, clinical use, safe triaxone side effects and safe triaxone mechanism of action. This is all that we are going to discuss in this particular lecture. So stay tuned and continue to watch. Let me take a color and let's start with the general properties of safe triaxone antibiotic. Safe triaxone is again a beta lactamase stable, beta lactamase stable broad spectrum cephalosporin antibiotic with an extended half life. So increase the half life so that this particular drug stays with our body for a long duration of time, longer duration of time compared to the other cephalosporin type of antibiotic. And we know that this is a beta lactam, this antibiotic has a beta lactam ring. And the thing is the beta lactam ring can be destroyed by the beta lactamase enzyme, beta lactamase, lactamase enzyme coming in from bacteria. Some bacteria produce that. So the beta lactamase Reduce, uh, released from the bacteria can destroy the beta lactam ring. To prevent that, uh, this particular antibiotic has a beta lactamase stable structure that is unique about it. And safe triaxone is a cephalosporin, as I told you earlier, it treats different kinds of infections, including life threatening forms of E. coli infection, pneumonia, or meningitis. So, you know, meningitis and uh, there are some form of E. coli infection which can be really life threatening, they can be treated with the help of this ceftriaxone antibiotic. Ceftriaxone also used to prevent infections of people having certain types of surgery. So generally after surgery or post-surgery infections, nosocomial infections which are acquired from hospital environments and surgery where there are open wounds, uh, those things can be prevented with this uh, ceftriaxone antibiotic. So let's look at the classification of this antibody. This belongs to third generation cephalosporin. So you can see there are different generations. There are fifth generation cephalosporins are available right now from first to fourth. You can see from first generation to the fourth generation of cephalosporin, the gram coverage is different. The gram positive bacteria is being covered in the first generation. As we are moving towards fourth and fifth generation, more and more gram negative bacteria is being covered. So the third generation cephalosporin like cefixine, cefotaxime, ceftriaxone, we're talking about ceftriaxone here. All these cefixine, cefotaxime, ceftriaxone, they belong to the third generation cephalosporin and they are against, uh, mostly against the gram negative bacteria. They have more gram negative bacteria in their coverage. Okay. Mechanism of action, again, as I mentioned plenty of times that this is belonging to beta lactam antibiotics. So they go up against the cell wall synthesis of bacteria so they are bactericidal okay uh, they inhibit the bacterial cell wall synthesis by binding to the transpeptidase enzyme which is also known as penicillin binding protein or pbp okay pbp actually catalyzes the cross-linking of peptidoglycan layers so the presence of pbp cross-links the peptidoglycan layer and forms uh, the dimer and uh, not dimer actually polymers of these nam structures together and that's known as a peptidoglycan uh, structure peptidoglycan polymer but in this case presence of this beta lactam antibiotic beat penicillin beat vancomycin be it uh, this cefotaxime beat ceftriaxone beat cefazoline all these antibiotics they are going to inhibit the function of this transpeptidase or the function of this PBP or the function of this penicillin binding protein. As a result, no cross-linking will be done and as a result, no synthesis of peptidoglycan wall. And the peptidoglycan wall is thick in gram-positive bacteria, thin in gram-negative, but still it's important constituent of both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Without peptidoglycan layer, the structural integrity of the bacterial cell will be hampered and there will be osmotic imbalance and the bacteria will die and that's the target. That's the target to kill the bacteria with the help of this kind of cephalosporin antibiotic example, ceftriaxone, okay? So the function of ceftriaxone or mechanism of action of ceftriaxone is again to bind to the PBP and render it inactive so that the polypep uh, I mean the peptidoglycan synthesis is hampered. In this animated segment, we are going to see the mechanism of action of beta lactam antibiotic. So any of the antibiotic that carries the beta lactam ring, be it penicillin, be it uh, carbapenems, be it uh, cephalosporins, they all belong to this category and they prevent the synthesis of peptidoglycan layer. And if the peptidoglycan layer is not produced in bacteria, the cell wall will not be strong enough to hold uh, and maintain the structure of bacteria.
and as a result the cell will die so what is the mechanism of beta lactam antibiotic let's look at this this is uh, the structure of uh, let's say peptidoglycan component which is made up with two things one is a nag and nam n acetyl glucosamine and n acetyl muramic acid and particularly in n acetyl muramic acid we can see the amino acids are connected to each other so the amino acids are with different color code red green blue red are d alanine in this case and at the end of this nam structures there are this two d alanine residues connected so these are the alanine residues the red color d alanine residue and in order to build the peptidoglycan structure in order to build the peptidoglycan structure this d alanine need to have a proper cross linking event and for that they require a transpeptidase enzyme known as pbp penicillin binding protein okay so this penicillin binding protein brings itself and interacts to the d alanine and what it does it cleaves one of this d alanine out okay and it brings another similar set of uh, nag nam structure to cross link and this nag nam structure will be in place and transpeptidase reaction is catalyzed by the transpeptidation is catalyzed by the transpeptidase or pbb protein and a peptide bond is formed and this concludes the cross linking of the peptidoglycan layer so this is a normal way of how the peptidoglycan layer is cross linked now what happens when we treat this bacteria with beta lactam antibiotic so here comes the penicillin binding protein and here is the beta lactam antibiotic the beta lactam antibiotic is going to bind to the transpeptidase active site of this penicillin binding protein and what it will do is that it will not allow the cross linking event so now this pbp will go and interact to the alanine and it will not allow the further cross linking event so peptidoglycan cross linking will be inhibited and as a result no cross linking as a result no cell wall structure formed as a result the bacteria will die now what are the clinical uses of ceftriaxone so basically ceftriaxone as well as cefotaxime both belong belong to this uh, third generation cephalosporin class and they have the similar kind of clinical use so used for the initial treatment of meningitis so if there is meningitis found uh, diagnosed initially we use this for non immunocompromised patients uh, we start with this ceftriaxone or cefotaxime but if a person is immunocompromised then we should not use any of the cephalosporin antibiotic we use it with vancomycin we start with vancomycin vancomycin is again another example of beta lactam antibiotic that's going to prevent the peptidoglycan cross linking peptidoglycan polymer formation in bacteria okay, we will be talking about vancomycin in a separate video so the antimicrobial activity is good uh, so they have the ceftriaxone and cefotaxime they have good antimicrobial activity they have good penetration into the cerebrospinal fluid and the and the record of clinical success is very good for ceftriaxone and cefotaxime always we start with ceftriaxone and cefotaxime in case of meningitis treatment only in case of non -immun only in case of immunocompromised patient we start with vancomycin so ceftriaxone has a longer half life so not advised in neonates okay because it interferes with the bilirubin metabolism and can increase the bilirubin content causes uh, severe jaundice so cefotaxime is preferred in neonates because does not interfere with the bilirubin metabolism on the other hand the use they are most effective and active against penicillin resistant strain of pneumococci and they are recommended for the empirical therapy of serious infections that may be caused by this strains so pneumococci so basically pneumonia causing uh, coccus bacteria so that okay so this pneumonia is another disease where we can target it with the uh, ceftriaxone antibiotic because these antibiotics are safe to, to use them normally you start with penicillin but if uh, the penicillin is found to be resistant in that case this uh, ceftriaxone or cefotaxime can be used ceftriaxone is the therapy of choice for all form of gonorrhea and for several form of lyme disease which is you know uh, done due to the tick bite and all okay so for gonorrhea we always start with ceftriaxone for meningitis we start with ceftriaxone okay and remember for neonates we use ceftriaxone we don't use ceftriaxone we use cefotaxime because 
ceftriaxone can interfere with the bilirubin metabolism in neonates okay and against the pneumonia we also use ceftriaxone quite easily if th that is penicillin resistant okay so these are all clinical uses of ceftriaxone and cefotaxime now let's move to the side effects of ceftriaxone so ceftriaxone side effects what is phlebitis is uh, one example of ceftriaxone gastrointestinal upset and there is hardly any antibiotic that will not cause any gastrointestinal upset as a side effect because this antibiotic means they are going to destroy some of the normal good healthy microflora of our gut as well that really that leads to the you know dysbiosis of gut flora and causing different gastrointestinal upset this also can cause skin irritation skin reactions puritis headache and dizziness and pancreatitis is a rare but there is a side effect of pancreatitis and also colitis can be side effect if we use a ceftriaxone or cefotaxime for a long period of time okay for a longer duration that can lead to pancreatitis and colitis as well which will turn really ugly if we don't manage it so that's all about ceftriaxone general use ceftriaxone clinical use ceftriaxone side effects and ceftriaxone mechanism of action so if you like this video about the safe track zone antibiotic then hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future thank you bye